Well, good morning, Ms. Stephanie. I want to take a moment here and review the lesson we had the other day. Now, when we take a look at the golf swing here, I think in your golf swing you had a lot of basic fundamentals that were very good. Uh, and then we had some others that we could uh, definitely tweak and uh, get you into a little bit better position, which would equal a little more consistency in your golf swing. And then obviously a little bit more consistency in ball striking. Uh, so as we start here, the first thing, we take a look at your golf swing here. You know, the first thing is the stance. You know, your stance was a little wide. So what we did, we obviously did talk about the width of the stance there. You know, as you take the club back, you see just a little dip in that left shoulder as we come down. I like good extension that you do have as you take the club up to the top of the golf swing. Make a good shoulder turn. We can improve a little bit back, you know, a little bit more on our turn back, you know, at least with our lower body, trying to get a little bit better uh, stable foundation as we turn back. Now then as you take the club back down and through, you can see the club here starts to release just a little early, but then where you can tell that is just by the club starting to forward bend just a little bit here. And the hands in this case, look how the hands have already released here. Now, when I talk about that, what do I mean? Well, when we take a look at, let's just say, um, let's take a look here. Give me one more second. Right here. Get yeah, Julie Inkster from behind. Here's one lady here that was, um, was Fro Worth. But as you can see, as she gets to the top, there's a difference between here and here. Now, obviously, you have a little more flexibility than she does, but you can tell, one, with her stance, you can tell, one, two, the, how she turns back as well in this case. Now, then, as we come down and through, the part I was going to talk to you about is right about here. You can see the difference when we look here. They go from right about the left forearm here and here. So we go from your left forearm we see here and we see there. And you see how the club is already starting to bow here. A little more hip turn with her. And you see where with yours we have little no hip turn. So it's a lot of arms swinging through the shot making that transition through rather than utilizing your whole body. And you can see all your hip turn and your final turn through the shot is all done after the fact. Now, when we go behind and see it down the line view, this is what we see. You know, we see this right here. Big difference between here and when we look at Julie Inkster here. You know, look at the amount of flex in her knees here. Here, she's got a little bit of a hunch. She's a little bit older. But still, we can see one, the amount of flex you have here, here, back's in a good position. But second, you can see how your arms are reaching out with the golf club. We can see her arms are hanging naturally from her shoulders and hanging down to hold the golf club. A little bit better position. So initially, what we initially start with is with your stance. Try to get you a little bit better foundation, narrowing up the stance, getting the weight a little bit more up on the balls of the feet, taking flex out of the knee out of the knees, and then let the arms hang a little bit more naturally. Now, from there, then, what we talked about is right here. We talked about a little bit better path as you're going back, because you can see right here, as you take the club back, you can see how the club is going back behind you. Well, what happens there is the club starts to go back behind you too much. You see how the club is pointing out here to right field, but also how whenever your hands go back behind your body, your body will then compensate for that by allowing your shoulders to dip down, or another part to change, whether it be your left your left knee, as an example. You know, in this case, your left knee didn't get affected as much, whereas more is your shoulders turning down. And you can see here, your shoulders should stay on roughly this type of plane, but you can see how yours turn down. Compared to, we watch Julie here, we're up. Club dropping back down and through. But the biggest part here is where you see her right about 
waist high. And actually, I'm going to take it down a little bit. You can see where your arms are very similar to hers taking the club back in this case. But where you can see a difference is, is if we look at our hands right here, here, yours start to go around your body. Hers start to angle up just right over that right shoulder, but then we drop it back down. We get a little more hip turn down and through, right through impact right here, and you can see right there, that little position right here. See that little right hip start to turn? We get up. And your hands start to drop down, but there's no hip turn down and through. So one of the things, and that's probably what we'll work on next time, trying to get you a little bit better position. So what we worked on the first time, and I'm going to skip forward here and kind of talk about what we talked about in this lesson here, was one, obviously, your stance. Getting you into a little bit better stance. One, and step back away from it. Get to the ball. Now, how we did this here, finding that weight weight right over the balls of our feet here. You can see a definite difference between here and there, can't we? Yeah. So initially, you can see where your hunch here is back over. And in reference to this, same regards here, you can see how your hunch is out way past your heels. Here, the hunch, we go about the same position there a little bit closer, all right, which tells me the weight is a little more centered instead of being so far back. Now, when we pay close attention to this as we look, you know, obviously by doing this is we want to make sure you're in that stable foundation. See the back's a little bit higher, a little bit straighter here, arms are hanging a little bit naturally. So I like this position a lot better. It shows a little bit better uh, stable foundation, a little bit better positioning as we get into this. So great job there. Now, as we move on, the next thing we talked about was trying to get you into a little bit better uh, transition. So we kind of tweaked the grip just a little bit. And what I did here by tweaking your grip here was try to give you a little bit more of the overlap positioning as you come into this. Now, as you think about this, you know, getting a hands where the hands are a little bit closer together. You can see on the left-hand side here you had more of the ten-finger grip. Now, when we go more to the overlap or interlock grip, what we find here is that it's going to allow your hands to rotate through a little bit better properly. Now, at first, it's going to feel a little strange, maybe a little inconsistent, a little weak, but what we're trying to do is give you a little bit better position as you turn back and through, allowing that uh, hand to rotate through a little bit better properly, a little bit better position. You can kind of tell there. So see, we, don't, we only see, when we look here, we only see the three fingers now rather than seeing, you know, all four fingers, all eight fingers lined up like we see on the left-hand side here. So as we move forward from there, what we look at or what we want to pay close attention to is as you go to take the club back, this felt kind of odd to you here, but what I did is very simple for you is I gave you the waist tie drill. Now when we talk about the waist tie drill, it felt kind of weird, but it felt kind of strange, but it gets you to get the club going up where we're making the shoulders, you can notice just in this case here, you notice how your shoulders don't, and your angle of your spine, right there. See a little difference on how your spine goes from here to down here. Compared to here, spine is here. Spine stays there. Shoulders stay on the same plane, almost like you're turning around your spine in, in an instance. So as we look at this here, all I gave you to do, and then what I want you to do, is you notice I put that little pull down right at your feet. You know, it allows you to be able to take the club back more of a one-piece takeaway. Left arm is parallel to the club at your feet here, as we see here. And what do you know? The club is parallel to the club the club at your feet. See the toe come up. We've got a little hinging of the wrist. Now as you go to come back down, I want you to pull back down with the left hand. We swing through to the right, from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. You're almost handing me the club on the left-hand side. Now, just noticing this difference just when doing this, you can see, one, your hips turn, and your hips turn through. Compared to here,
down, enter. Show you right here. You see a bigger difference of how your weight definitely got off your right hand side compared to your left. You know, and this is all, you know, there's some other things with this drill that I want you to do is feeling that turn, feeling that position. But for the most part, allowing your hands to go back, keeping your hands in front of your body, and then being able to turn through the shot. Now you can use this, I want you to do this setup, you know, getting one, getting used to the grip, feeling the grip change, two, getting used to the stance, and then three, being able to turn back from the right hand side to the left hand side. Now, Tiffany, if you have any questions, by all means, I want you to give me a call. 314-724-6539 or shoot me an email at michaelwyatgolf.com or Michael y yeah, michaelwyatgolf at gmail.com. michaelwyatgolf.com is my website, but feel free to.